Hey, what's up, guys? So it's time for another eBay antique unboxing. And I have my restoration gloves on because this one is probably going to take some rest, uh, restoring to actually bring it back to its former beauty. And let's get this baby open. Now, it was uh, padded well, thankfully. I'm a stickler for packaging. And uh, I've received quite a few things broken from eBay sellers before. So when I see bubble wrap, it's a good thing. And uh, you're probably wondering, what the hell is this ugly thing? And let's uh, actually find out. All right, so what we have here is a very, very old lady's change purse or coin purse. And this was made probably anywhere between the 1880s and 1900, when this uh, type of bulldog motif was most popular. The bulldog motif uh, went into, uh, of course, up into like the 40s uh, during World War II, and uh, especially World War I, when England, um, the symbol for England was the British Bulldog. And a lot of people might say, but wait, isn't that a Mack truck logo? Well, a lot of people use the Bulldog as their logo. And uh, so why are these so small, these little antique change purses? Because women didn't have to carry around paper bills back then. Because for about 15 cents in 1895, you had about $5 in pocket change. So uh, these little purses were always so tiny because uh, ladies would uh, keep their, like, pennies in there, nickels, dimes, and possibly quarters, um, you know, going towards the uh, beginning of the 20th century. So now, why am I going to clean this? You're wondering, should I clean my antiques? Well, the answer is don't. <laughs> don't follow what I do. Um, I'm only doing it because it drives me crazy to see things this scratched up and this filthy. Um, yeah, I don't like the patina on it. A lot of people do like the patina. So if you have an antique and you're actually thinking of selling it, do not clean it. It will uh, take the value away. But uh, like I said, don't follow what I'm doing. I am going to get Brasso. If Brasso makes this worse, <laughs> and Brasso is used to clean brass, um, if Brasso makes it worse, what I can do is use um, some paint and I can uh, repaint this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to clean it and we'll see what happens. So there's always uh, interruptions in the middle of my videos. So before I go to try to clean that and see what happens, by the way, don't do what I'm doing. Um, you may take the value away from your item. I'm going to show you some other dog antiques. And this is uh, very, very popular to find these old French bulldogs. Bulldogs were very, very popular. This is uh, being sold for $394. And this is actually a lamp. And it's a perfume lamp, and it was made around the 1920s, 1930s. Um, they made these ceramic or porcelain perfume lamps. And uh, how delightful is that? He has glass eyes. Very, very cool. All right, so I'm going to show you some other bulldog antiques. Now, bulldogs were very popular. Now, there was symbolism in Victorian things, everyday Victorian things. The bulldog meant um, always being faithful, and it always meant something to do with courage. So um, it had like a courage type of uh, symbolism and always being faithful. Here's an 1880 walking stick cane uh, with a bulldog on it carved into the top. Very cool. So this is some, some of the antiques you'll find with bulldogs. And here we have an antique carved French walnut brush stand. And uh, it's a bulldog. And this one, they have a date of 1920 on it. Very cool. And here's a really cool ink uh, inkwell. And it's bronze. And it's a... Uh, a bulldog, <laughs> and uh, he has even a locket around his neck with a lady's picture hanging from his collar. Um, this one is dated about um, the 1890s, and yeah, we have about the 1890s, and look at the price. Yowzer, 3199 US dollars. Um, that is uh, quite outrageous. And just when you thought you couldn't find any cooler bulldog collectible, we find this really cool guy over here. He's a Russian bulldog watch fob. $2,125 made with silver and 14 karat yellow gold. Um, wow. These are some of the things you will find. Well, this even has an amethyst on the back. Quite amazing and uh, really, really, uh, wow. I just, I, I just can't get over this. If I had the money, I would definitely have to buy this, especially with those amethyst eyes. Whoa. And just when you think you couldn't find anything cooler, now we find this Victorian lig lignum vitae. Bulldog Inkwell, circa 1860. So you can see even back in the mid-Victorian time frame, they still had uh, bulldog motifs. 
And uh, pugs were also very, very, very popular at the time. So this also looks like it could be a pug. Now I have an antique pug over here. And uh, this one is made out of uh, like pewter and silver. And he has glass eyes like the guy over there. There we go. This is a pounce pot. And he has little holes on the top of his head. And you use that to uh, actually stop the ink from actually smearing all over the paper. So you would sprinkle uh, actually crushed fish bone onto paper and it would absorb the ink. Quite cool. And this one is at 1,295, uh, is that British pounds or euros? I don't know, but he's absolutely cool. <laughs> and again, when you think you can't find anything cool or cooler, uh, we get this bulldog bank that was made in the 1880s, I believe. Look at this guy. Holy cow. Look at that. That is really awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show you a few more before we uh, go to the restoration mode. And uh, yeah, you, you might have to pay a pretty uh, penny for something like this. At least, I'm guessing at least $1,000 or more. And so bulldogs weren't only inkwells and walking sticks and banks. They were also dog prints. And here's one from 1890. Then when you think you can't find anything cooler, you find this bulldog growler toy, $2,650. And this is a French bulldog. And they had those bat-shaped ears. And this was a toy that was made out of paper mache and mostly sold um, at actually seasort, uh, uh, I'm sorry, seaside resorts. And so rich parents who would like to walk the promenade across the beach and show off along with their children would uh, actually buy one of these for their children. And the child would pull the little leash and the dog would actually uh, have wheels on the feet, on each one of the feet. And uh, the child would pu pull it across the boardwalk. And uh, these were expensive. And as you can see, these are still expensive. The cool part about these toys is, by the way, I'll never be able to add one of these to my collection, um, was that they were head bobblers also. So as the child would pull the string and the dog would walk alongside tandem, the little head would bob back and forth and nod. Really, really absolutely cool. Look at that. And here we go with some more antiques and uh, more dogs. This is a Victorian bulldog. And it has a... Uh, Green emerald eyes, and it's a stick pin. Really cool. $485, yes. It'll definitely set you back quite a bit of money. And now we found one, actually, like my purse. It's probably the same design. And this one is sterling silver, and it's a pendant with ruby eyes. And this is what mine is supposed to look like when he's all cleaned up, hopefully. And here's my purse. My purse was part of a chatelaine. So now I know that my purse actually used to have a ring hanging from the chain and this would dangle from a lady's finger and it's missing from mine. But this is what it's supposed to look like when it's all clean. And trust me, I searched the internet for another one like this. This is the only one that came up on the whole entire internet. There we go, antique bulldog purse. And I tried different combinations, brass. I tried Victorian brass bulldog purse and could not find another one except for this one on the internet. All right, so let's get to the restoration and see what happens. So again, please do not do this on any of your antiques because you'll blame me if you destroy it. I have Brasso and it's a polish that cleans uh, seven different metals. And so you want to shake it up and you want to do a patch test. So you want to find a spot that is not going to be as conspicuous. So I'm going to do a little spot on the back. Now you need something to wipe it with a little bit of abrasiveness. So you can use a Q-tip, but I want to go with a paper towel or a napkin as uh, my starter because you want to get this crust off of the antique item. So I'm just going to put a little bit of Brasso on my napkin and uh, we're going to see what happens in real time. And again, this could destroy my antique. <laughs> You're seeing a lot of dirt and filth is coming off of this, but this is going to probably take the brass off because it's just probably plated in brass. So this is probably not a very smart thing to do. Now, this thing is pretty toasty. So what I can do is take a little rub and buff. If I take the gold finish off and I can actually take a paintbrush and just brush, uh, brush a little rub and buff on here to give it back its gold. Um, again, it's not a smart thing to do, but we'll see what happens. And you can see the filth coming off of this and you want to rub this on a few times and try to, uh, you know, see if it'll clean off any of the dirt, but you are going to take the finish off. I promise you, unless it's solid, if it was solid brass, solid, um, like, uh, chrome, solid pewter, solid, uh, aluminum, solid bronze, um, or solid like metal, 
then you're safe. But if it's plated, you're in trouble. Okay, so actually I did this part and I did not do this part. And you can see it's actually cleaning up nice with the Brasso. So I might continue to do it, but this spot over here, you see, it looks like it's just coated with brass. And I don't know what's going to happen there. But if worse comes to uh, worse, like I said, what I can do is I can use rub and buff on here. Okay, so the back is done. And as you can see, you know, we have a little bit of a plating problem. Again, that wasn't solid brass. I did not touch the front yet. And uh, I don't know what to expect. Um, this may really harm this item. But again, I told you I can use rub and buff to fix it up. So look at it before and we'll see what happens uh, with the Brasso. Okay, so I used some Brasso right here. And uh, already you can see it's starting to actually clean up. But we are missing, you know, some of the plating. Um, I will continue to do the whole thing. And if I don't like the way it comes out again, we will use the rub and buff at the end. Okay, so I am so grateful. I did not have to use the rub and buff and I was able to keep the original finish on this. Um, so this is actually what was underneath all that grime from, oh my God, over 120 years worth of filth. And uh, that was all tarnished. So I believe this is copper. Um, it may be copper. And I even was able to clean the chain, which is uh, quite hard to do. I did with a toothbrush and the Brasso. And uh, now while it's not perfect, look how much cleaner that is. That is uh, quite cool. So, uh, yeah, so I was uh, really, really happy with this $20 purchase on eBay. Um, this is a very, very old bulldog. I like to add dogs to my antique collection and uh, especially purses and what I call smalls. Anything that's antique and small is really fun to collect because you can always find a spot for it in your collection. And this is no exception. So once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Brasso actually did the trick and uh, I did not have to uh, actually alter it by painting over it. And there you go. So thanks for watching another one of my videos and I hope to see you guys all soon. So long.